Hello, my name's Sean Brown from Wise Innovation, and in this Wise and Quick Guide video series, I'm going to show you how you can create and apply a temperature correlation formula to your nodes. So initially, after installing your system, the user should be looking to commission the system, and that is basically setting a zero reference value from the initial data. Now that is not a, a baseline period. The important thing after that commission period is that you have a baseline period. And this is required without external interaction or third party movement. So we can understand the natural thermal variance of the node and its mounted installed position. This will allow the sensor and the environment to be assessed for the effects of temperature and that's because the sensor and the structure it is mounted upon changes with temperature. So there is a potential for rotation of the device. And essentially, if there is a direct correlation between the rotation of the sensor or the tilt meter and the temperature, then a correlation formula can then be applied to the data set. So this video will run through that process. So going into this dummy project, I'm going to focus in on one specific node for this example, and this will be known as reference ID saft underscore one minute. So what we're looking at here, just so we understand, is that I have not initially baselined this or, and commissioned the value. This is purely the raw arbitrary values just for the purpose of this exercise. And the two axes that are in use are X and Y. Now, there's certain criteria that have to be abided to. So if we go to setup and we go to the actual tilt node temperature correlation workflow, then within here is a little help section. And as I initially did in the introduction, step one kind of goes through the rules of the process. So there should be no engineering disturbance and construction works over the period of data selected. There needs to be at least 24 data sets, a temperature range of 10 degrees, a consistent sampling of time interval reading so that a goodness of fit can then be calculated over the data. The easiest way to kind of review your data is to go to data, show plot, so you can understand the relationship of temperature and tilt. So if we focus in on the node of interest, and the attribute or the axis that I'm interested in here is the Y and obviously the temperature. So I want to see the relationship between the two to see if there's good correlation. And I'd be selecting the data over a said baseline period. So you can see here I've selected a time period which would typically resemble the baseline period, and we press plot, so we can see here that by picking the two attributes we produce a graph of two independent axis values, so what we want to do now is display this by right clicking on the graph. And what we're looking to do is produce a double vertical axis plot. So essentially this allows a two axis graph to be visualized for the, for the data selected. A pop up box appears and we want to drag one of the axis to one side. In this example, I'm just doing temperature. We press confirm. Uh, 
Okay, so now we have a, a two-axis graph. The reason for doing this is to is to truly understand the correlation graphically. So obviously here initially I, I've known there's a good fit. Um, but obviously you're not always going to get that situation. So if I was to do a best fit analysis of a, a polynormal regression formula, then I'd expect the resultant to be very good. Now you'll have a difficult, a different graph representation for your data. But what you're trying to do is ensure that the data that you select over the time frame meets the criteria we mentioned. So 10 degree temperature variance, and we can see here that the delta is 30 degrees. Um, we've got sufficient data, we've got five days of data, and we've got a consistent reading interval. I know this was set on one minute. So the next stage will be just to analyze and undertake correlation or pre-analysis. And to do that, if we right click on the graph, we bring up the little pop-up menu again. And we can see here we have the selection for correction analysis press this and we can see by default temperatures on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis is Y so they're the two that we've pre-selected and we press the little correlation analysis button and as I'd expect just graph through graphically looking at the data we have a very good goodness of fit so I'm confident for this point that I'm happy to take this forward for the the creation of the formulas and our temperature correlation now the same might be applied to the x-axis just to ensure that you've got a goodness of fit that's required. Next stage we'll press OK and now we're going to go forward to setup, tilt node, correlation. So here you have the capability to select a whole multitude of nodes. So if you've got the tilt meters on the same asset potentially on the same facade, you'd like to think that the, the, the correlation formula over the same time period would be the same. Um, obviously, if you've got a different asset, that may be subject to, to different change, and therefore I, I would probably propose to do those independently. So if we select the, the type of node, the horizontal axis is grayed out because that is by default temperature. And the axis I'm looking to utilize or correlate is the Y. We select the serial number, and there could be a multitude of serial numbers here. So for what I'm going to do, I know that I've got two tilt meters on the same asset, on the same facade, so they are behaving in the same manner. I select the two serial numbers together, press confirm. I previously knew the data range I want to use, so I'm just going to rectify this. And we press OK. And finally, proceed to the correction analysis button. Obviously, the analysis will take a little while, depending on how much data you're trying to utilize. And we can see here because obviously I've done a pre-analysis check on these two nodes, that the goodness of fit is excellent. So if we just review the help section, then obviously I've met, I've met the conditions within step one. Step two, then we're looking at a goodness of fit of, a, of at least 60% and above, and you can see that mine are currently 97 and nearly 99%. So therefore, that the correlation formulas can be carried forward. If you did not meet that criteria, then you cannot carry that formula forward. So you can see by default, these two are selected. If one was to pass, then obviously the goodness of fit would be bad, for instance. 
then this would be not ticked and you would not be able to tick that and carry that forward. So it would be the your job then to, is to focus in and pick data you think is suitable or perhaps you, you can't actually temperature correlate the node of interest and that one would have to be not carried forward. So once you finish this step, we generate what we call a virtual node calculation formula. Press this button. I'm just going to amend the data set to match that. Previously defined. That's OK. Now, now, if you obviously make a mistake, you're not happy with this correlation, you can see the bold text. So, so each time you generate a temperature correlation formula within this workflow, it will overwrite overwrite the uh, previous, any previous ones created. And we press confirm. And OK, so note on the screen here that the virtual node, a secondary calculation, now appears within the virtual type and virtual node. We press OK. And if we carry forward to the virtual node section, we can see here, and essentially, because we've done a linear regression calculation, and this has created a, a separate formula. Now, if I look down the bottom, this bottom row did not prior, prior exist. It now does. And if I was to press expand, you can see here we have two entries for the two I've just defined. If I was to go back into the temperature correlation and, and do additional nodes, this box would obviously increase in size, or if I was to overwrite the two existing ones here, that's what would happen. So what it's done automatically is created a virtual node, and this is the default name that it's defined. The readout or the units that have been calculated are in decimal degrees. So obviously if you have already undertaken a calculation or you're reviewing the data in millimeters per meter, then you then need to um, calculate these into the required units. So you can see previously here that I've created this entry. This formula here was, is within the formula templates and is readily available for all users to use. I'll just give you an example of how to create that row entry. Now if we press add, You have the opportunity to name this formula as you see fit. And obviously, I've named it millimeters per X formula. So we could just call this temperature corrected. And perhaps we'll do millimeters per three meters just a, just as an example now if I was clicking the formula here this would obviously mean I'm creating the formula from scratch we don't want to do that if we press the import virtual type template then Wizen and myself are creating formulas within the fourth tab along where my mouse is now then in here we can define the one we want to select so if I go down to the uh, near the bottom you can see this is a formula which is converting decimal degrees into millimeters per whatever the user decides to uh, to substitute D for we select that formula read the notes this is informing you of what the the letters are substitute are substituted for D is a baseline distance, normally a constant, so a, a beam or a baseline, obviously. Uh, enter that as a millimetre distance, so if it's three metres, 3,000 is the value to be entered. 
and A is associated at the decimal degree unit value for the node or the virtual node calculated. So if I press confirm, change the units to what you obviously require. So if it's millimeters per three meters, then obviously put that in there and we just press save. That would then create a row entry, a separate one. I'm not gonna press save here because I've already got one I'd like to utilize. The final step is just to link the two formulas together. So you get your required output. So if we press expand on the one that's gonna convert it into the millimeters per X meters, then obviously knowing that the D was the baseline, we can select this. Now that's a constant, obviously. And as I say, if it's three meters, put three meters in, press confirm. The A, well, this is going to be substituted with the virtual node. So the row directly below. So if we click virtual node, you can obviously see the various different types. And the one down the bottom is the one to select. And here we do, you would have the individual entries within that bottom row. So obviously we've done two nodes, therefore we've got two entries. So confirm the name. So you have the opportunity here to, to give us a name that's, that's sensible for your output going forward. So this would be, you know, your, your new reference ID name or, or so forth. So if you were calling this node underscore O one, then not only would you be outputting in the non temperature correlated, which is always there as an output, you've now essentially created a temperature correlated output as well. So therefore I've given us a, a separate name that's easy enough to understand. Press confirm. If you've got a second entry, you can obviously add a copy and you just change the column entries. So this would be node 02, confirm. And we change the, to the correct node, press confirm. And important to press save and ensure they're active. Save again. We've now finished the step. So this is the creation of a formula to give you the output. Remember you've got the little deactive button here. So obviously you won't need to deactivate it, but you've got the opportunity to do that if required. What you've not done is you've not back calculated any data. So the reason why this little icon here is flashing is because of that reason. So it's a hint really that you need to carry now forward to the virtual node update. We won't go into the detail of what, as to what this means, but leave it as default. Press confirm. Confirm again. And you'll see the progress bar update. Obviously we've got a bit of computation to be done in the background. So I'll pause this and come back to you in a moment. So once you've completed the formulas, next stage will be to review the data. And to do this, if we go to show table, then the first tab is obviously what we typically call the raw table. Um, obviously the data could be offset. The second tab is associated to virtual node calculations. So this is calculated data. So within here, and we can see the, the entry I've made with the bottom two rows 
then these are the current results and values where we have taken account of the temperature correction or correlation. If you are using the Ryzen platform for your table or your tablet display, then you have the option obviously where you can create a multi-attribute table. This is quite useful because here we're showing the temperature corrected dead values. You might be interested in, in those that are not temperature correlated or corrected. And just to show you that quickly, if we go to setup virtual type and virtual node, and we go to multi attribute, what we can do here is essentially add to this table. Um, so we can add additional columns in and then within these actual cells by clicking into them and sorry, clicking the toolbar, we can add in the, the raw value, so to speak. So you can have the raw non-corrected or correlated and then you can have the correlated in next to it. And finally, if you're a client who is exporting data out, then we go to download and upload and data export. And if you're using an FTP, then obviously this tab here is associated to the node. So again, this is more the raw way of exporting the data out. If you've used a formula, which we now have for the temperature correlated, you need to use the second tab. And the second tab essentially mirrors the first, but here you're exporting out the calculated results. So um, set that up and obviously export that accordingly. <clears throat> this concludes the, uh, the video to undertake temperature correlation.